the movement towards co-educational schools was a very political movement in the 70s, which essentially said boys and girls learn in exactly the same way and have to have exactly the same opportunities. Um, and that's just not the case. Um, obviously, I'm very experienced in girls' education, and girls have a distinctive learning style, and they engage with each other in a way which they wouldn't engage if there were boys in the school. Well, it's obviously OK for girls then, but uh, some research suggests it's not so for boys. In fact, those educated in single-sex uh, classes apparently are more prone to depression and divorce later in life. So what do you think about that? Well, I think you're referring there to Professor Leonard's research. She was actually at the conference today, and even she admitted that was uh, men who were born in 1958. And I think it's fair to say that single-sex education for boys now is a very different animal from what it was in the 70s. So taking uh, that aside, it doesn't really seem to prepare them for the workplace. Very few workplaces or offices are single sex. Children have to learn to interact with each other. Well, but children aren't puppies. This is what we do with dogs. We socialise them. What you've actually got to do, and obviously my expertise is girls, is you've got to instil them with confidence. They've got to be self-aware. They've got to have the ability to take risks. And frankly, they're not going to do that with boys around them. They, school is not, a, it's not an apprenticeship for life. It's about being educated and prepared for life. Well, what a difference. I've got to pick it up and in the next few years with my yeah. daughters. That You came from the single sex side of the I came camp, from the single you? sex side. My brother came from the mixed education. I think we yeah. both turned out, turned out OK. So it's a, certainly an interesting talking point. Lots of people have their own opinions. I don't think there's a right or wrong. I think it'll rumble on for a while yet. Hmm. Well, do stay with us tonight. Still to come, a round-up of the goals from last night's football. And regiment paraded in front of the Prince at the Norfolk Estate this morning. Also on parade was the regimental mascot, a ram known as Private Derby 29. The regiment has recently returned from a six-month deployment in Afghanistan. Police have released new CCTV pictures of a van they're linking to the suspected murder of a great Yarmouth man. 30-year-old Derek Tempest was last seen visiting a garage in the Blackfriars Road area of Great Yarmouth on the 28th of October. Forensic evidence suggests he came to serious harm there. Police want to trace movements of a white van that left the area at around 7 o'clock that night. James Hall and Andrew Ventum, who ran the garage, were discovered dead at the garage days later in unexplained but non-suspicious circumstances. The Norwich and Peterborough Building Society is to close 10 of its branches. They include those in Unthank Road in Norwich, Halesworth in Suffolk and Chelmsford, Clacton and Colchester in Essex. All ten will shut next March. The society says the move is designed to cut overheads rather than slim its workforce and it hopes all affected staff will be found new roles. A plan which could see many local councils in Norfolk and Suffolk swept away is now back on track following a court ruling. The process which could see the 16 existing councils cut to just two was being held up by a court appeal by three Suffolk district councils. They've now lost that appeal and a new timetable for change is being drawn up by the Boundary Committee. Now, we've had some pretty rough weather of late, and those recent storms across the country have led to a big increase in the number of orphaned seal pups. Now, that's according to specialist RSPCA staff in West Norfolk. East Winch Wildlife Centre near Kings Lynn is currently home to 35 seals, with most of the new arrivals coming from Ireland, the North East and the Channel Islands. Laura Burns has this report. Separated from their mothers, the seal pups arrive here weak and unable to fend for themselves. Some, like this one, are less than three weeks old and still have their white coats. Nursing them back to health can take several months. Just emaciation, really, where they've not been feeding, so they've, they've become really thin and weak. They'll be washed up on the beach, mum won't be around to feed them, and they'll gradually become weaker and weaker. Stormy weather across the UK has hit the start of the seal pupping season hard. This centre alone is caring for 35 pups, most of which need to be force-fed at first, before they gain the strength they need to be released back into the wild. Most are found on beaches by members of the public, and while they look extremely cute, RSPCA staff are warning people not to get too close. Don't touch, don't go near them. They may look sweet, but they are very aggressive, and please don't let your dogs near them either. The best course of action is to stay clear and to ring the RSPCA on our main number, 0300 123 4999 and we will actually send out one of our inspectors to investigate. Feeding each seal costs around £20 a week, so the RSPCA is now calling on local businesses to sponsor a seal in return for the chance to name them. With more unsettled weather expected for December, 
staff here are expecting a busy and rather costly Christmas, but say that seeing the pups recover is priceless. Laura Burns, Anglia News. Sure, it is wonderful creatures. Now, Suffolk police officers have caused almost £10,000 of damage to vehicles by using the wrong sort of fuel. Since April, officers have put petrol into a diesel car or vice versa 15 times at a cost of more than £1,500. And in the past five years, they've made the error more than 60 times. The force says coloured discs have now been fitted to every car to label what fuel each vehicle takes. Meanwhile, Suffolk police say a confused pensioner made almost 8,999 calls to them in nine months. The 86-year-old woman who suffers from dementia was convinced someone had stolen her car. From January to September, she made more than a tenth of all emergency calls logged by the force. Officers say they have given her some support. Well, football now. Norwich City have moved up to third in League One after winning at South End last night. The Canaries jumped above Colchester, who lost at Brentford. Matthew Whiting rounds up the action. South End became the latest team to be swept aside by Norwich and their free scoring captain Grant Holt. After a goalless first half, Holt broke the deadlock on 68 minutes. Corey Smith then added a second from a similar angle. South End had a goal ruled out for handball before Luke Daly was upended in the area. That allowed Holt to score his second of the night from the spot, his 18th of the season. Colchester lost 1-0 at Brentford, Charlie McDonald the scorer, while at the other end the U's were too easily kept at bay. They've now slipped below Norwich into fourth. Matthew Whiting, Anglia News. Meanwhile, in the championship, Ipswich Town have suffered a major injury blow. Goalkeeper Richard Wright has been ruled out for up to four months after tearing a cruciate ligament in his knee. Wright suffered the injury in Town's comeback win at Cardiff on Saturday. The club have now asked for special dispensation to sign a new keeper on loan as they lack experience backup for Wright. Norwich Cathedral has been praised by English Heritage for its bold approach to construction projects. A £10 million scheme to create a new refectory and develop the cathedral's hostry into an educational and hospitality space has seen its medieval surroundings transformed. English Heritage has highlighted the scheme as a shining example of how national treasures can be safeguarded.